Hey everyone, this is LEGO's latest Luke Skywalker's X-Wing Fighter set, and I've been really looking forward to this one since it was announced because it is an X-Wing for $50 US, 5-0. Compare that to the last original trilogy X-Wing that we got, which was $80, 8-0, or the last normal scale X-Wing of any sort that we got, which was 90, 9-0, 9-0 to 5-0, that's a big difference. As far as what this comes with, you get, of course, a pilot and astromech, and then there are just two additional minifigures, and there's no side build whatsoever to add extra pieces to this. So no little uh, weapons cart or the, the ladder or anything like that. They just focus on the main build itself. And you know what? The build of this is, in many ways, very different from what I've been used to for a number of years now. A little bit of how the nose section of the fuselage is done is is common to ones that we've gotten previously but the internal mechanism for the s foils is completely different yeah, most of the build is different but the whole thing actually looks a lot more detailed than I, than i expected for such a a reduction in price definitely does not have as many pieces as other recent x-wings but it doesn't look to me just on the surface to be as much of a downgrade as I expected. Also, the size is not as much of a downgrade as I expected, and I will show you a comparison to the most recent, uh, previous, uh, it was 2018 original trilogy X-Wing. Probably this nose bit right here, the absolute tip, is what more people will dislike on this than anything. It's it's rather different. I personally don't have a problem with it. I think the, the techniques make sense and are just fine, but yeah, if it if it strikes you wrong, I, I can completely understand that. Now, this does rely on some stickers. You've got the 2x6 tile here with a big old sticker on it. And, of course, stickers for some of the details out here that really add a lot to the appearance of visual texture. There are also some small stickers used in here. This entire section here that is used to hold on to the, the S-foils in, in the middle of the fuselage is all built up with uh, Technic lift arms. It's a very different thing, but ultimately you just have this little bit of that light gray one that you can push down and that will deploy the S-foils for you. Then they will stay open and there is nothing on the other side or anything to, to make them close. So you don't have an, an easy way to close them other than, well, putting the thing down or just closing them <laughs> like that. So no big deal. This does not rely on rubber bands whatsoever. However, it does not go back to the old, old, old school style of using hinge plates, ratcheted hinge plates, uh, which had their own limitations and were a little bit obvious. So this has a proper working mechanism in there. It doesn't look too bad. Like when this is opened up, you know, you look down in there, you don't see particularly bad stuff. They don't have any blue color or anything like that that's really off. So yeah, overall, I think this is a pretty, a pretty good one. What I like least about this is definitely the, the inlet area here. I feel like that could have used a printed or least stickered tile in each of those to give you that, that little, little T-shape, uh, uh, I don't even know, veins, diverter. Oh, this was not on all the way, but you know, that normal look that we expect to see down in there. So I think, I think that definitely could have been done better. That's definitely room for major improvement. Uh, also, you cannot easily retract the front gear. You know, we have not been able to retract the main gear uh, ever, I want to say. <laughs> At least this does have some skids back here, so that is nice. But this front one is just there. So if you want it gone, if you don't want to see it, you have to pull it off completely, and there's there's no place to put it. So that is a little bit of a, a downer. You can put an astromech in this the correct way, even though it is downsized a bit. And it doesn't go quite as deep down in there as I would like sticks up too much you know but at least it does go the correct way and this is the standard size of cockpit put your figure down in there and you just have a console which is a printed piece there's no yoke you know no suggestion of proper controls for this which isn't that big of a deal to me but still something worth pointing out uh, I think that it doesn't really change the play value that much, I don't think it really changes the appearance of this on display that much, because usually you're not going to see little details in there. But again, it's something that's that's worthwhile to, to note that is a downgrade here. Looking at it from the underside, 
it's not so bad. Uh, I think that plate doesn't look so great. You know, it's kind of kind of obvious, but otherwise, I'm not seeing a lot of colors that I don't want to see other than some blue pins in here, unfortunately. But I think Lego designers are pretty stuck on that. There's basically rules that tell, tell them they have to use the, the blue there. You only get two spring-loaded shooters on this, and they're on the undersides. So they're pretty well disguised away, but unfortunately, I don't know, you know, two is less than four, right? I want to have four lasers always. If you're going to have them that can shoot, I personally prefer to have four of them. I, I liked having four of them uh, before, and now we don't. These cannons are pretty simple in their construction, but they look pretty good. I think they're better than recent ones that we've gotten. You know, this little dish part is back to where it needs to be, being obvious. I think these could have been longer, though. Just uh, another one of these candle pieces or two. Uh, definitely would have gone a long way. Of course, you can just do this. Whoops, didn't mean to take it that far, but you can just do something like that. Last thing I want to point out in terms of criticism is that the lower S foils can shift back and forth. They are not going to fall off or anything. There's, there's enough durability in there, but they're just not locked in place for to aft all that well. So they're able to rotate a little bit around the fuselage. They tend to come back to center, but uh, you do have a gap between them and you do have the ability to move the lower one. It just feels a little bit flimsy when you swish the whole thing around. It, it is a very swishable plane as usual or craft as usual. Kind of opens itself up like that as well. So if you want to keep them closed, just keep a finger under here. But yeah, it just, you know, it doesn't feel as as tight as as I would want. Here are Luke Skywalker and R2-D2. And I did get a pretty good lightsaber hilt there and a good lightsaber blade. The print for Luke looks pretty good straight from the torso down into the hip, down into the legs. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, the helmet print for him is pretty good. It's a little bit, a little bit blurry, but as usual, because, well, it, it, it's me and this is my luck. Look at the R2 head print. It is, as always, wonky. Mm -hmm. It's way higher in the front than in the back. I will evidently never get a properly good astromech print. I've gotten some that are decent when I'm really, really lucky, but most of them are off a lot like this one is. So that's too bad, but it's just my luck. Just my luck always. And, um, some other people have, have encountered the same problems as well, unfortunately. The other side of Luke's face looks uh, pretty good. You know, basically just visor up and let me show you what that looks like framed by the helmet there. And the print on the back of the torso is good. And finally, Princess Leia and General Dodonna. <laughs> I, I always chuckle every time that I hear or say that name. A very collectible figure, that one on the left. And the one on the right is pretty good. I'm not 100% sold on the Leia face there. I feel like they've done a little bit better for her in the past. Uh, I like the general uh, graphic design on it. It's just not quite matching her look. I think the general, the Donna one, looks much more accurate. I do really like the prints on the back especially over here going all the way down into that specialized lower piece, lower body piece. And you do get an alternate face here that's just a little bit different, but appropriate, and an alternate face here as well. There are very few spare parts, including one extra laser bolt, and here's the spent sticker sheet. It is quite a lot of stickers for a set of this size, I'd say. For sake of comparison, here's the new X-Wing, and here's the 2018 version. So you immediately see what I mean. The difference in size is not tremendous, however, $50 US, $80 US, and if it was sold today, it would be up most likely to 90 it does include a side build as well, though, in that price, to be fair. But, I mean, even the proportions are very, very similar between them. They use the same canopy piece, so you can definitely get some scaling off of that. And if I just put these, like, overlay them, there you can see, I mean, it's like a, it's like a, what? 10% difference in size or something like that. It's kind of, it's kind of insignificant. There, how about that? Yeah, I think that should do the trick pretty well. Yeah, not a huge difference. Definitely noticeable uh, difference in level of detail. You know, the more you look at it, the more carefully you look at it, the more you will notice that big difference. But ultimately, you're almost getting as much X-Wing now as you did before. So, Good on Lego for actually getting this right. 
downsizing ever so slightly, removing a lot of pieces and removing a ton of price. It's exactly what was needed for LEGO X-Wings, in my opinion, is exactly what's needed for a lot of things that LEGO does repeatedly. It's definitely an exercise that could be done poorly. You know, you can downsize and make something practically not worth getting anymore, especially for uh, for collectors. You know, they did the Junior's version and they've got another one that's coming out this year uh, that's, you know, super, super downsized, super, super simplified. Works fine enough for really young kids, but was definitely not a good replacement, not a good economy replacement for a proper minifig, not exactly scaled, but minifig compatible, you know, more normal sized one. But this is absolutely a great substitute for a $90 X-Wing, and it doesn't make too many bad compromises. Some things about this I actually like better than the the traditional ones that they've been doing. I definitely think that the Astromech should have been lower, and these inlets need a printed 2x2 two two or something like that. Also, the ability to retract this would be great. It's not necessary, but would definitely be great. Otherwise, pretty good stuff. And yeah, just moving these these little dishes up really helped with the look of the laser cannon. So those look better than on the, the last one, you know, the more expensive one. Overall, oh, durability is also pretty good here, even though it doesn't feel necessarily that great. It actually stands up to aggressive uh, manipulation, we'll say, quite well. And the minifigures are pretty good. Wonky head print, once again, for me, for my R2, but uh, that's uh, that's my, my perpetual curse. I, I expect that to never change. Thank you for watching this. If you want to see how this went together, how different the build is, for the, the new version, check out my pure build or the, uh, the you know, sped up time-lapse build, whichever you prefer. I'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for watching.